Thanks for joining me, I'm Brandon Lee and I'm about to give you a filmmaker's perspective on that lens that we all probably have but maybe we don't appreciate quite enough, the Nifty 50. First of all, why does a 50mm lens look so damn good? Well, part of it has to do with physics. I won't go any deeper than I understand myself, but basically the diameter of the lens and the diameter of the sensor are almost the same size, which means the straight lines stay straight. Things just look normal, which is how it earned the nickname, the normal lens. All right, now let's dive into a few specific techniques I use for shooting with the 50. First up is tracking motion across the frame. I'll get into this one a bit more later in the video, but basically what I mean here is that the 50 millimeter lens is good for shots where something is moving left to right or vice versa, and the camera is moving with the subject. This is because the compression of the distance between things creates distinctive layers that add to the sense of motion in the shot. It just feels good. Next is the frame within a frame. So right now I have a door frame that creates a frame around me in the composition. And then around that is the frame of the screen itself, the 16 by nine frame of the actual video. You can create this effect with the 50 more easily than with other focal lengths, because with the wide angle lens, the door would be a lot smaller in the frame. So you wouldn't see it surrounding me as much. It wouldn't be as compressed. And with a longer telephoto lens, the door would be possibly completely blurred out behind me and you wouldn't really see the shape of it around me. So the 50 is kind of a sweet spot between telephoto and wide so that you can really easily create these frames within frames in your composition. Now I want to talk to you about why you should keep your aperture open when you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens. Right now I'm shooting with a 50 f1.8 lens, but the aperture is closed down to f9 because it's bright. Now why does this shot look so bad? Well, I think it's because of that deep depth of field combined with the longer focal length, which reminds us of the bad old days of small sensor video cameras, or the bad new days of smartphone video. Either way, it doesn't look good, so we need to open that aperture a bit more. The proper way to deal with a bright situation is to use a variable ND filter, or a variable neutral density filter, which is effectively the same thing as putting sunglasses on your lens. And the variable ND means the sunglasses are of variable strength, so if it gets a little brighter, a little darker, you can adjust for it. Now I'm able to have the proper motion blur in my shot and I keep my nice blurry background. Which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Case Filters. I wanted to feature their Wolverine magnetic filter system because it lets me add, remove, and switch the filters really fast. So here's how I do it. I start by stepping up all my lenses to 77 millimeters using a standard step up ring. Then I add the Case magnetic variable ND adapter ring on top of that and then I can drop the variable and the filter on top of that. There's a 1.5 to five stop filter and a six to nine stop filter. So whenever I switch lenses, I don't need to worry about unscrewing filters, which can be a lifesaver, especially when shooting in the cold where threads tend to get stuck. And yes, the magnet is pretty strong. Now we're gonna do a little test to see if the ND filter is causing a color cast on the neutral tones in the image. So sometimes when you use an ND filter, it will cause your image to get a little cooler or a little warmer or a little more green, a little more magenta. So that's what we're gonna test here. This is the image with no ND filter at all. And now we have the 1.5 to five stop ND filter at full strength. And now you're seeing the six to nine stop filter at full strength. So you can just compare the different images and see if there's any color shift between them. Now I'm gonna demonstrate some moving camera shots with a 50 millimeter lens and talk about the techniques that I use. First up is a gimbal shot with an autofocus lens and the lens of choice is the Viltrox 50 millimeter F1.8. And on that lens, I'm using the Case Wolverine 1.5 to five stop VND filter. In this shot, I'm just walking straight while my camera points to the side and I'm tracking laterally with my actor, Owen. Because the case filter allows me to keep my aperture wide open, I'm able to separate Owen from the background using the bokeh of the lens, using that narrow depth of field. So let's break down the elements of this composition. First of all, this is what's called a motivated movement. The camera is moving just to keep Owen framed. So the camera's movement should be mostly invisible to the audience because their attention is focused on his character. Another thing to notice is that this shot moves from wide to close up. We start with Owen in a full shot to give a sense of his environment. Then he walks closer to the camera 
and then the audience can get a better sense of what his character is feeling. The third element here is the layers of depth, as I mentioned earlier in the video. I chose this cafe as a location because all the layers created by the plants and the columns and the shelves and the tables enhance the sense of motion as the character walks past them. Now I'll show you how I would shoot a shot like this with a manual focus lens without anyone pulling focus for me. For this little demo, I'm switching out to the TT Artisan 50mm f.95, all manual lens, and again, I'm using the Case 1.5 to 5-stop VND. To keep Owen in focus here, I need to keep him the same distance from the camera for the whole shot. That means we can't end on a close-up of him. If I wanted a close-up at the end, I would need to cut. So you can still shoot gimbal shots on a manual focus lens, but you need to keep the same distance from your subject to maintain focus. Here, I'm tracking laterally to bring him into frame, but he stays the same distance from the camera at all times. And even in this darker environment, I still needed my variable ND filter because this lens has a super wide aperture, f.95. Now, just for grins, let's see what this same shot looks like on a 17 millimeter lens instead. You get a lot more sense of the space, but a lot less sense of the character. It's just a very different feeling. So that's my video about the 50 millimeter lens. If you saw any gear that interests you, the links are in the description. Be sure to check out those case magnetic VND filters. Also, if you wanna learn more from me, check out my film school unscripted studio, that's in the description too. And of course, click like and subscribe and the notification bell so you know when I post my next video. Okay, I'll see you next time.